Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sneha and welcome back to the Perio Hub. So today we are going to go ahead with our part 2 discussion on cementum. So in the earlier video we discussed about the unique aspects and the development of the cementum and today we are going to discuss about the various classes or various types of cementum tissue which are present. So let's quickly get started. In the previous broadcast, we discussed that cementum is a dynamic tissue and we stated that dynamic basically means that the cementum tissue is not uniform throughout the root. So uh, the composition of the cementum keeps varying based upon the location. So in the coronal aspect, it is different. In the middle third, it's different. In the cervical, uh, in the furcation areas, it's different. And in the apex, uh, the, uh, the tissue composition is different. So let's discuss about the various classes or classification of the cementum. So broadly cementum can be categorized into two components. We have the acellular cementum which is usually present in the cervical one third of the tooth and then we have the cellular cementum which is restricted to the apical end of the root as well as in the furcation area. So acellular cementum is thin. So as you can see, it is thin in uh, the coronal aspect, whereas the cellular cementum on the other hand is quite thick and it is restricted to the apical ends. Now the common term here is the term cellular. So acellular does not contain cells, whereas cellular contains cells. But which cells are we talking about? So here we are talking about the presence of the cementocytes. So to understand uh, where exactly are these cementocytes coming from, let's go back to the development of cementum or the process of cementogenesis. So in the earlier broadcast, we discussed how the dental follicle uh, gives rise to two sets or two populations. It gives rise to the fibroblasts and it gives rise to the cementoblasts. The cementoblasts in turn help in the secretion of the cementoid tissue which basically is immature cementum or uncalcified cementum. So this cementoid is ma made up of two components. It is uh, made up of uh, the collagen fibers which are basically uh, type 1 in nature. So almost 90% are type 1 in nature. Apart from that, we have the presence of the non-collagenous proteins. So here, the collagen fibers which are produced by the cementoblasts are termed as the intrinsic fiber group. On the other hand, the fibroblasts uh, help in the production of the collagen fibers which form the component of the periodontal ligament fibers. But a certain part of the uh, periodontal ligament fibers which are also called as the Sharpie fibers are also present in the cementum tissue and this forms the extrinsic fiber group. So we need to remember the fibroblasts produce the extrinsic fiber group present in the cementum whereas the cementoblasts on, on the other hand produce the intrinsic fiber group. So now that we have spoken about the fibers and the two groups of fibers, now let's talk about the cells. So the deposition of cementum or the cementoid tissue occurs in two phases. The first phase is also called as the pre-functional phase and the second phase is termed as the post-functional phase. Now pre-functional phase uh, is the deposition of cementoid tissue which occurs before the tooth reaches the occlusal level. Whereas in the post-functional phase, cementum deposition occurs after the teeth reaches the occlusal level. So in the pre-functional uh, phase, the cementum occurs at a slow but at a constant rate uh, of about 3 mu m deposition per year. Whereas uh, the post-functional phase, the cementum deposition occurs 30 times faster as compared to the uh, pre-functional phase. So here the type of cementum which is formed is the acellular cementum. And here the type of cementum which is formed is termed as the cellular cementum because here the cementoblast would secrete the matrix component around the cell itself because of which the cell will get entrapped within its own matrix secretion and now this entrapped cell is now termed as the 
cementosite this cementosite is lodged in a area called as the lacunae which are then connected through projections termed as the canaliculi so let's see a histologic picture to understand this better so here as you can see this is a cementosite right here and it is present inside a lacunae and it is interrelated to the other cementosites with the help of the presence of the canaliculi so till now we spoke about two important aspects first we spoke about the fibers and we stated that the fibers which are present in the cementum can either be the extrinsic group or it can be the intrinsic group and second we spoke about the cells uh, and based upon the presence of the cementocytes uh, we can either have the acellular cementum or we have the cellular cement so based upon these two components and uh, the location and the histologic features of cementum it was page and schroder who gave a detailed classification of the cementum tissue into four major classes so first two classes are the acellular types so we have the acellular afibrillar cementum we have the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum and the second two classes are of the cellular type so we have the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum and the cellular mixed stratified cementum so let's understand these types in detail so first let's talk about the acellular afibrillar cementum so as the term suggest a cellular means there is no presence of cementocytes and a fibrillar means it does not contain any fiber system so neither it has the intrinsic nor does it have the extrinsic fibers present in this uh, variety so this type of cementum is not useful in anchoring the tooth to the supporting structure so because there is no fiber system present the teeth cannot be anchored to the adjoining periodontal ligament or to the alveolar bone coming on to the location of uh, this uh, type of cementum this is usually seen as isolated patches along the ceg so we have two uh, different uh, variants uh, which are seen so first we have something called as the cementum islands so these cementum islands are seen uh, in the dental crown area coronal to the cemento enamel junction whereas uh, the other variant that uh, can be seen is termed as the cemental spurs so these are usually seen along the cemento enamel junction where they cover minor areas of enamel and dentine so a cellular a fibrillar cementum is not much in thickness it ranges between 1 to 15 mu m in uh, thickness coming on to the next type which is the a cellular extrinsic fiber cementum now as the term suggest a cellular means it does not contain any cementocytes whereas extrinsic fiber means that it does contain collagen fibers but these are derived from the fibroblast instead of the cementoblasts uh, so uh, they are basically the sharpy fibers which are seen so these sharpy fibers help in tooth anchorage to the adjoining bone so if we talk about the location of the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum it is present in the coronal half of the tooth and uh, the thickness of this tissue varies between 30 to 230 mu m so the next type of cementum that we'll be talking about is the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum so again as the term suggest it is cellular that means there is presence of the cemento uh, sites uh, and it is intrinsic fibers so um, it means that uh, th these are basically collagen fibers which are produced by the cementoblasts which are native to the cementum tissue so basically this type of cementum is seen along the resorption lacunae so when forces of mastication act on to the tooth there can be certain areas of resorption uh, that are produced so this type of cementum which is the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum uh, helps in the formation of reparative cementum and covers areas of resorption lacunae the next type of cementum is the cellular mixed stratified cementum so this type of cementum can also be called as the mingled cementum and this type of cementum is formed when cellular intrinsic fiber cementum overgrows a layer of 
acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. So we have the dentine right here and this is the dentine cementum junction and on the layer of dentine we have a layer of the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum which is formed and over and above this acellular extrinsic fiber cementum we have a layer of cellular intrinsic fiber cementum that is formed. Now because of the mingling of these two different types of cementum we have a newer class of cementum which is the cellular mixed stratified cementum. Now if we talk about the important characteristic features of the cellular mixed stratified cementum firstly uh, the location uh, it is usually present in the apical third of the root uh, al along the uh, root apex as well as in the furcation areas. The second important feature is the thickness. It is uh, the most thickest type of cementum which is seen. So uh, it ranges between 100 to 1000 mu m. And the third important feature is the presence of the incremental lines or the lines of rests. So these are basically growth lines that appear between the acellular and the cellular cementum. Now the last type of cementum is also called as the intermediate cementum or it can also be termed as the hyaline layer of Hopewell Smith. So this is basically the most peripheral layer which is formed on a layer of unmineralized dentine. So in this particular histologic picture, A is the dentine layer. And uh, on the unmineralized dentine layer, we have a, a layer of uh, Hopewell Smith which is formed. This layer is seen just right adjacent to the cemento-dentinal uh, junction. Uh, if we talk about the thickness, it ranges between 0.5 to 0.8 um, um in thickness and it contains the enamel uh, matrix like protein it basically helps in the attachment of the cementum so here we have a layer of cementum and it, uh, this uh, layer of uh, this intermediate layer of cementum helps in the attachment of the cementum tissue to the dentinal surface now in certain conditions uh, when we do root planing procedures we unadvertedly destroy this layer of uh, the intermediate cementum or the hyaline layer because of which it is seen that the reparative dentine which is formed after the process of uh, root planing is not able to adhere properly onto the dentine surface now one more layer which is seen right beneath the hyaline layer is the granular layer of tombs. So this layer is basically made up of collagenous and non-collagenous proteins and uh, it forms a layer of hypomineralized areas. So that's the reason it gives rise to this granular appearance. So to quickly recapitulate what we saw uh, in this particular uh, video, we spoke about the dynamic nature of cementum and we saw that how cementum is not uniform throughout the length of the root. We spoke about the cells which are the cemento sites and we spoke about the collagen fibers which can either be the intrinsic type or the extrinsic type. Now based upon these components, it was Page and Schroeder who classified the cementum into four major classes. So firstly we spoke about the acellular afibrillar cementum, then we spoke about the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum, then we spoke about the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum and ultimately we spoke about the cellular mixed stratified cementum. Then we went about talking about the intermediate cementum or the layer of Hopewell Smith and the granular layer of tombs. So with this we come to an end of this part 2 broadcast on cementum. Uh, and I'll be meeting you next in a brand new year with the next video where we'll be discussing about the functions and the clinical considerations of cementum. I would also like to take this opportunity to wish you all a very very happy new year. Hope this year brings in a lot of happiness, joy and success to all our lives. So until we meet next, take good care of yourself. Uh, this is Periyoha signing off.